very warm welcome to the audience of Gathering of the Great Minds. Today we are honoured to have with us Associate Prof. Dr. Pang Yong Kik, who will be speaking on advancement of information technology and its impact on healthcare services. So before we dive into the topic, I think it's only fair if the audience uh, knew a little bit more about our guest speaker here today, which is uh, Dr. Pang. So Dr. Pang actually joined the Faculty of Medicine uh, at University of Malaya in 2002 as a lecturer. And uh, this position also requires him to function as a respiratory physician at UMMC, also known as University of Malaya Medical Center. Now, besides uh, clinical medicine, teaching and research, uh, he has a great interest in anything digital. So which is why he's here today to share his insights. And he follows the electronic and digital technology uh, news very, very closely. He was also the chair of the UMMC e-prescription and electronic medical record development committee, uh, which was <coughs> until the letter was uh, disbanded in 2018. And as of now, he is currently heading the UME Health Unit of uh, Faculty of Medicine to drive innovation in digital health education, research as well as health services. So once again, Dr. Pang, thank you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, thank you for the very kind All introduction. Right. It's my pleasure to be here uh, today. Mm. All right. Great to hear that, Dr. Park. So I guess we can dive straight into the discussion today. So perhaps you can uh, define for us what does digitization of healthcare mean and what are some of the benefits that we can get out of this? So um, there are actually two terms uh, in, uh, that people that tend to get confused. One is uh, digitization. The other one is digitalization. Because both of them actually, the, um, they sounds quite similar. Uh, as far as I know, um, digitization is a conversion uh, on any conventional uh, format into the digital format. So, meaning that it involves uh, the, the coding, right? So we know that coding is actually uh, the, the, uh, is present in actually digital uh, bytes in, in the computer. On the other hand, uh, digitalization uh, is actually the process of uh, converting the business model uh, from the conventional model, uh, the model uh, into uh, the digital model. So one is actually uh, conversion of format. The other one is more of uh, actually the processes. Um, so the former is known as digitization and then the later is known as digitalization. So as to uh, the benefits, um, there are of course are many benefits of um, digitize, digitalization or digitization of healthcare. <clears throat> First of all, I think if you look at the uh, storage uh, uh, space uh, for digital uh, data, it is very, very much uh, uh, reduced, right? If you look at actually the, the the paper, it will occupy a big space, whereas uh, digital uh, data is only going to occupy a very tiny space um, in the uh, in the computer system. And uh, the other advantage I can think of is that we do not need to utilize a manpower to retrieve <clears throat> as well as to return uh, the uh, patient record folders. I think this is what we uh, used to have in the past. Uh, the, the folders uh, have to be kept in the record office and when we need it, we need to retrieve it from the uh, shell. And um, obviously you need to get someone to uh, retrieve the, the folder and, uh, and then send it to the site, which is actually the clinic or the ward. Once it is, uh, uh, we, once we have uh, finished using it, we need to get someone to send it back and the record office will have to uh, dispense uh, or spare their uh, resources to uh, return the folder into the respective uh, shell. So as you know, this one will take uh, a lot of manpower. And here we are not just talking about uh, the, uh, the folders. We are also talking about other uh, uh, form of uh, health records like uh, the x-ray, CT scan, um, 
So as a result, you, you can see that uh, in the past, uh, we could only retrieve part of the patient's uh, record because if let's say this patient had been actually uh, coming in um, for the follow-up uh, over uh, the past many years, you can imagine that the folder will be very thick, especially those who have been admitted uh, repeatedly, the folder will be even uh, more enormous. So it is impossible to get uh, the whole records uh, to the clinic or to the ward uh, when they need it. We can only specify which record uh, we would like to retrieve. But this is very different when it comes to uh, uh, the digital record, right? Uh, because as I alluded earlier, it only occupied a very small space um, in the in the server, and when you need to retrieve it, uh, of course you can actually uh, retrieve it electronically, and this uh, does not involve any uh, human uh, uh, power at all, or what we call the manpower uh, versus the elect electric power, and um, which does not cost uh, anything, and we. And we can actually access the entire record of this patient, not just actually uh, some of the records. So you can see that it is very, very convenient, save a lot of manpower. And we have to bear in mind that uh, retrieval uh, in the past can only be done um, during office hours because uh, record office uh, staff only work uh, during office hours. Whereas a uh, digital record uh, function in a 24 hours basis. It's just like uh, the banking services. In the past, you can only uh, withdraw money or, 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 uh, you, or withdraw the check uh, during the uh, office hour. That is limited to about maybe eight hours of working hours. Uh, the, the, the rest, the two thirds of the time, uh, you, can't, you, you feel so helpless, you can't do anything. Uh, so this is very much like uh, the banking uh, uh, system uh, which has undergone uh, digitalization. And also, uh, if let's say the patients are seeking treatment from uh, different centers, their health record in principle uh, can be accessed uh, by just a few clicks of uh, the mouse. The store data can be backed up uh, to avoid any permanent loss of uh, the clinical notes or other data due to either uh, human errors or natural disasters. And also data can be read by uh, the computers or in this case, any machines and analyze up for various uh, purposes. This will provide an opportunity uh, for the future development of what we uh, call artificial intelligence. So when we build a brain into the computer system, so it's not only that the, 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 the human is um, providing the uh, consultation, but we can also utilize uh, the computer function or what we call the computer brain to provide uh, certain uh, answers or analyze uh, uh, certain things in the medical record. And we know that uh, digital data can be copied uh, very, very quickly, uh, within split second or within seconds. Uh, we can also uh, consider uh, performing the documentation uh, via the voice or via uh, the voice and convert it into text using our current technologies. So you can see that uh, the, the list will go on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would not actually uh, need to elaborate further, it's non-exhaustive, the benefits are behind. All right. Thank you so much for that, Doctor. Yeah, I guess uh, it's also the same when you look at uh, students nowadays, uh, especially when they transition from high school to university. I remember when I was in high school, I used to have like three or four boxes of books, uh, especially during SPM, and then my whole room was filled with books. And then as I moved to university and I chose to go paperless, now I only have my iPad and my computer with me. And Everywhere I go, those two are enough because it stores much, much more than what uh, you know my my space in my room can do. So I guess the same applies to in terms of uh, digitization. Uh, uh, because I remember also when we go to clinics last time, there used to be like a huge shelf. Uh, and then each patient would have you know their own chart and all that. But you know, uh, as you said, accessibility is one thing. When manpower, 
to retrieve it, you know, and then it also takes up space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, doctor, you mentioned quite a few examples um, of this digitization. Uh, so, and I think the main one is on patient info, uh, their information, and then if they were to do like some imaging, the CT scan, X-ray, you are also able to see that. So, are there any other examples uh, of digitization uh, in healthcare uh, besides the one that you've mentioned? So, essentially, uh, when we talk about uh, digitization, any uh, health data can be potentially uh, digitized. Uh, apart from uh, what we have discussed uh, just now, the clinical notes and the, Im- uh, the images, uh, other uh, uh, details such as uh, the prescription uh, details, what has been prescribed, what uh, uh, has been stopped and all these uh, details. And we can actually have an audit trail as well. Uh, who actually stopped it, who started. So all these details can be captured uh, very effectively through the uh, digital system. And uh, there's another thing that we rarely talk about, <clears throat> uh, which was not uh, possible in the past. <clears throat> but I think uh, moving forward, with the uh, advancement that we have in digital technologies, uh, such as uh, the patient uh, health data when they're at home, so uh, we normally uh, make our judgment uh, based on what we see while the patient is in the clinic, right? That is actually one tiny little dot in the patient's uh, medical uh, history. So we often make decision uh, based on that, uh, whatever that we gain or data that we gain uh, on that particular uh, uh, visit point. But what happened uh, with the patient uh, between one visit to another uh, is entirely uh, uh, blank, okay? And most of the time, uh, even if you would like to retrieve some of this information, we, we could only rely on the patient's verbal account on what had, uh, had transpired uh, during the interval, say an interval of uh, normally about three months or six months or any uh, chronic uh, diseases. But uh, with the uh, advancement in digital technologies uh, and the uh, availability of many home monitoring uh, devices, home monitoring uh, data, I think in future, is going to be a, another mega area where we can uh, capitalize or exploit for the benefit of the uh, patient health. So uh, I think at the moment, healthcare is very much uh, centered uh, around the patient who have certain sickness. So it's uh, very much a disease-based uh, management. But I think moving forward, uh, healthcare should not be revolving around treating the diseases. Uh, it should be uh, also take into account how we can prevent certain diseases from occurring. So as uh, uh, people always say uh, prevention is always better than cure, which I completely agree. But we do not have the effective tool until uh, the recent time. Uh, so moving forward, I think uh, home monitoring uh, device uh, and home monitoring data becomes will become uh, part and parcel of the, uh, the, the uh, of the medical care and health data for uh, healthy individual will also be becomes. Uh, uh, important. Uh, so this is something that we can look forward and and I believe that this is going to change the landscape of the, the uh, uh, medical care or what we should now call the, the health care. See, medical care is when you are sick that you require some medical care, but health care is actually for everybody, whether you are sick or, or not sick because the purpose is to make you healthy and to prevent any uh, uh, any risk of you getting the, the sickness. So uh, this is one area that I think, uh, one big area that we can uh, uh, see uh, the change in, in terms of digitization. And uh, needless for me to say that uh, now there are many uh, apps where you can actually um, set appointment with the doctors uh, and then the many payments are not uh, made uh, uh, manually. They are actually made electronically, uh, such as uh, the invoices and payment transaction. 
uh, this has actually made our life a lot easier. It's not just making the life easier, but we can also track the healthcare costs, how much uh, we have spent uh, for our patient, and how much the patient uh, has spent, and how much uh, subsidies uh, have been uh, provided uh, for our patients. All right. Thank you so much, Sophie. I think those are some very good examples of not only how uh, uh, healthcare can be digitized, but also in terms of like improving uh, patients' health and. I think oh, I like what you mentioned on preventing the disease from happening itself because I think that way the overall global burden of the disease also reduce because I think a lot of us have the con- misconception that uh, you only go to the clinic if you're sick but actually you know you can go there to do medical checkups you know to constantly keep an eye on your health so yeah I think with all of this you know home monitoring ambulatory kind of devices I think hopefully in the future uh, healthcare will be greatly improved uh, so doctor I just wanted to bring up one point um We've seen a few times in, in news where you know the people upload their personal photos to a cloud service, and then what happens is for some reason uh, the cloud service was under attack by hackers, or and somehow their photos got leaked. So similarly in, in the healthcare setting, uh, are there any risks uh, involved related to like the breach of uh, uh, health information? Because uh, you know in medical school we are told time and time again confidentiality is very very important. You're not supposed to. You know, let anyone know. Uh, um, yeah, so I just wanted to know how about you know the risk of uh, breach of the health mm-hmm. information. Well, I think you raised a very uh, important uh, uh, questions um, in the process of uh, digitization and digitalization. Um, I think in <clears throat> in theory, breach of protected uh, health data, I think is uh, is always a possibility. Uh, but we also need to uh, be mindful that uh, the the breach in in any data uh, is not just occurring during the digital era. So it has occurred uh, when health records were stored manually. So if people wanted to steal the the, the records, they can always do so. But of course, uh, the difference is that uh, in the past, they need to actually enter the record office uh, manually. And they need to know how the system work uh, in order to steal uh, the data. So, uh, and the other important thing is that the uh, the data is stored in a very compact uh, space, and it's not just actually uh, one patient, but also uh, many uh, patients, almost the entire uh, hospitals uh, patients. So, if there is a, a breach of uh, digital data. Uh, we can foresee that a massive amount of data uh, can be leaked. And this is what we are very worried about. Because in the past, if there's any breach, it's probably just a few uh, individuals' uh, uh, folder will be stolen. But now we are talking about a massive amount of uh, data uh, can be uh, uh, can be lost or, or leaked. So, um, but I think the weak point in uh, the data breaches it's often actually due to uh, uh, human factors uh, rather than uh, the system or the digital system itself. So either this is uh, through um, the front-end users or the back-end uh, personnel uh, whom we have entrusted uh, to make sure the data is safe and well-protected. So a very uh, simple example, many end users um, after accessing the, the platform or the portal, they don't even bother to lock themselves out of the uh, of the system. So this will allow another user uh, using the same uh, username and password to access the, the health data. But of course, there are a certain measures that we can put in place in order to ensure that uh, even if that there's any uh, negligence uh, uh, on the front end uh, users the bridge will be uh, limited. For instance, uh, like the system that we are implementing uh, at the moment in uh, UMMC, uh, <clears throat> you can't uh, actually, even if you have the user and password, you, you can't uh, view all the patients uh, that were in the records. Uh, you will only uh, gain access to uh, whichever patients uh, who have actually come for the visit on that particular day. 
And same thing uh, for the ward patient, you can only see a uh, patient who are in that ward. If they are not admitted, if they are not uh, coming in for any uh, clinical visit, um, you, 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 you won't be able to uh, uh, view their uh, medical record. So these are some measures that uh, we can uh, put in place to prevent a massive uh, leak of uh, health record. And of course, I think uh, the password and all these things, uh, sometimes uh, the, uh, the system uh, is controlled by the administrator. They can uh, uh, ask the end user to change their password uh, every uh, few months. So these are another measure uh, can be taken. But of course, there are many other uh, ways where we can uh, uh, ensure that the uh, health record is uh, safer. I wouldn't say it's completely, absolutely safe. It's safer. For instance, like if the date, if the interface, uh, the web interface is not uh, being uh, uh, touched for over, let's say, five second, five uh, minutes, it will automatically lock out uh, the the user. So even if you have forgotten to uh, lock yourself out of the platform, the system will lock you out, and you, you need to actually lock in again using the the username and password. Um, Backend personnel, I think, is something that is uh, more difficult to prevent because we have, have to rely on their goodwill and the professionalism uh, to manage the, the server. Um, but having said that, um, certain uh, restrictions uh, can be uh, put in place in the backend uh, technical personnel. So they can't. Uh, only certain category of, uh, of individuals are allowed to uh, authorize on the access of data. Um, and then uh, and others are uh, even uh, with uh, technic, uh, uh, so-called uh, technicians will not be allowed to uh, touch certain part of the data. So through all this measure, I believe that uh, the risk can be minimized. I wouldn't say that can be eliminated. Yeah, this is always a risk. Thank you so much, Doctor. Yeah, I guess this is something we cannot escape from, lah. But uh, the only thing we can do is take measures to ensure uh, the risk or the chance of it happening is, is reduced greatly. So, Doctor, in terms of uh, digitization, and then you mentioned on home monitoring and all that. So, is there a chance where doctors will see patients lesser now? And if so, uh, what, what does that do to the you know the human human interaction? And what, what is, is the overall effect? Okay, so uh, when we talk about this, I presume we are uh, focusing on our discussion <clears throat> on uh, telemedicine in this case. I think no doubt that the interaction uh, through an electronic device is not the same as the interaction experienced by the patient face-to-face uh, -face. Uh, because one is a two-dimensional Another one is uh, three-dimensional, right? The face-to-face -face is three-dimensional. And also, uh, the uh, telemedicine, we have to ask ourselves how good is the connection and how good is the, uh, the, the device that we are using. So all this will um, affect our experience uh, of using uh, the technology or the uh, teleconsultation. So obviously, uh, we have to look into um, the, the size of the monitor that we are using to, to conduct the teleconsultation, the quality of the camera, sound system, as well as the stability of the internet uh, connection. Uh, because uh, as alluded earlier, this will affect uh, the user, not just actually the patient, but also the healthcare providers' uh, experience in uh, using the uh, telemedicine uh, facilities. Uh, but I believe that uh, it, it can be actually uh, quite close to the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, consultation if we put in place uh, some um, criteria. Okay, in order to do uh, telemedicine, you need to have minimum spec. It's just like uh, Windows, right? You want to install some software, it will ask you uh, on your system to check your system whether you fulfill the criteria to install this uh, app or this uh, software so that you, you wouldn't have the right clunky experience 
using uh, the uh, the app or the software uh, due to uh, inadequate uh, resources in your computer system. So I think we can emulate this, and I believe that uh, the consultation uh, uh, the time would not be very much uh, reduced. It's an interface that is actually quite different. Um, and also, I think that people probably will be more keen to have more frequent visits because in the past, <clears throat> uh, doing face-to-face -face consultation is actually a big thing for the patient and the family because they need to uh, drive there and then need to uh, make uh, allowance for the, the traffic situation, need to wait at the uh, clinics and all those things. So I believe that uh, with the availability of teleconsultation, the frequency of visits uh, is going to increase rather than reduce because it can be done uh, quite quickly, short consultation. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to replace uh, totally the face-to-face -face consultation because at the moment, uh, tele uh, uh, medicine, uh, you still can't perform physical examination uh, via the screen. So I think uh, the tele medicine is going to serve as a, a complementary uh, 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 visit to the face-to-face uh, -face visit. Uh, so I think they are not conflicting. In fact, I think they are complementing uh, each other. All right. Thank you, Doctor. So just building on the, the telemedicine thing, some people say that, you know, sometimes you cannot replace that human touch. You know, just when you put your hand on the patient's hand, without saying anything to try and control them, that things will get better. That already means much, much more than words. So, I just wanted to know, uh, besides all the other factors that you mentioned, how else can we sort of uh, integrate empathy uh, when it comes to you know things like telemedicine? Yeah, uh, I think it's, it's very uh, relevant to all this uh, uh, telemedicine. I think, uh, yeah, these are some of the issues that we need to address. How could we emulate the same experience as what it was before by the patient. And one of the things that uh, we often uh, say is that empathy might be lost uh, during the uh, teleconsultation. But we know that empathy is not just, I mean, the feeling. Empathy is often perceived by humans uh, through the facial expressions, the body gestures, as well as uh, through the <clears throat> express uh, uh, how you express certain uh, words, uh, phrases, as well as our intonation, right? Uh, because people uh, perceive whether you are empathized with them uh, through all this uh, uh, perception. And uh, with the limitation that we alluded earlier, uh, this can still be conveyed and perceived uh, via um, the electronic uh, devices, uh, provided that uh, the proper equipment is being used, right? Because you wouldn't want the unstable internet connection, you get a lot of this disruption in, in actually conversation and the background noise, and the screen is very small, and then you know, we can't really see properly, and it's not very clear, the voice is also very muffled. So all these things can be uh, overcome if we uh, if we uh, have a set criteria. So if you were to do telemedicine, we have to uh, uh, ask the end user to check their system. And then in fact, all these computer system, the server can help to check whether they have fulfilled some of these criteria. So until then, we, we should say that, uh, okay, you are not ready, you are not equipped for the um, teleconsultation. So um, then we should emphasize that uh, uh, the patient or the carer uh, need to come to the clinics instead of the, uh, uh, instead of uh, performing the consultation uh, via the electronic uh, devices. So uh, although I think there's still some elements that are missing, like the physical touch, that some patients feel that uh, um, with the uh, physical contact uh, during the physical examination, uh, this will actually give them the uh, confidence uh, and also uh, the reassurance. But then we are not saying that uh, uh, teleconsultation is 
is going to replace a uh, face-to-face -face consultation. Uh, so here we are saying that it's just playing a complementary uh, role. Yeah, because certain visit you may not need to perform a physical examination. Uh, for instance, like uh, we just wanted to follow up on the abnormal lab result uh, in two weeks time. So they can actually do uh, the consultation uh, uh, via the digital technologies. So it's not really necessary to perform uh, the face-to-face -face consultation. So if you see uh, things in this light, I think, uh, yeah, we are not worried of the loss of some of these elements. So we need to know uh, when to choose what form of consultations. All right, thank you so much. Sir. Yeah, I think I agree. Uh, yeah, like you mentioned, we can't replace, you just, it just complements each other. So we need to know when you can use both to their own benefits. So uh, coming back to digitization, I think a few weeks back, uh, a very big social media platform, uh, Instagram, I think it, it crashed and I think for about a few hours, like no one could actually use Instagram. So it was quite shocking that, you know, a, a platform as big as that suddenly was, was inaccessible to everyone. So similarly, uh, have you seen any uh, problems in terms of like this, this whole digitization in terms of healthcare? Like maybe the whole system like goes down and then how did it affect the delivery of care? And uh, if uh, all those uh, uh, has happened before, you see a potential of it happening, what are some ways in which we can uh, reduce that? Um, yes, I think you are raising a very pertinent uh, question. Uh, this is talking about the server uh, outage. So from time to time, we are seeing even the, the, the giant, Instagram, Google, Microsoft, they are experiencing uh, server outage from time to time. Or what we call the, I mean, put it in a layman term, is the, the disruption in the delivery of these uh, uh, digital uh, services. Um, I think uh, this is something that unfortunately we can't totally avoid. Uh, we know that uh, the, the uh, smoothness of uh, the uh, delivery of uh, services is dependent on many, um, uh, many more uh, interfaces. For instance, uh, you, uh, you have electricity issue, you have server issue, issue you have a software issue, uh, you have uh, internet connection issues. So obviously when there are more components uh, built into this IT uh, 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 ecosystem, uh, obviously we are going to encounter uh, more issue. Uh, having said that, um, we can at least minimize the disruption. So we need to have uh, the backup plans on how to address uh, problems arising from the IT disruption. Uh, for instance, we need to have a redundancy uh, system to kick in uh, during a server uh, uh, a breakdown or outage. Because this redundancy system is not just a backup data. It's actually another system that is capable of running the system. So, uh, of course, in normal time, they are considered uh, redundant because it's more, more or less actually the mirror image system that is running concurrently with the, the, the current system. But when one system fails, this redundancy system can uh, kick in uh, quite uh, quickly and serve as a, a backup system. And, uh, and I must also emphasize that uh, all uh, stored uh, health data should be uh, backed up regularly in order to avoid any uh, inadvertent uh, loss of data. And uh, as, to, as for the internet co connection, uh, I believe that nowadays we have uh, more options. Uh, we have the fiber optic uh, connection. We also have the wireless connection. So unless both uh, uh, are disrupted at the same time, if one is disrupted, we can still rely on another uh, as a backup plan. So most of the time, I think in hospital uh, where you have uh, massive data going in 
uh, and out of the server. Uh, obviously, we are relying more on the, uh, the, the fiber optic. But in times of uh, difficulty, uh, I think uh, we can rely uh, more on the wireless connection. All right. Thank you so much for that, Doctor. Yeah, I guess um, it's very important to have all of these this backup plans, um, mm -hmm. especially when a patient's life is at stake. So I guess uh, it bring, uh, this would bring us to the end of our podcast. So I think, I guess uh, the last few questions before we end is, what are perhaps your aspirations, goals and vision of uh, digitization in healthcare? So what do you want to see in the future? Um, for Malaysia, I think we are probably uh, quite behind in digitizing uh, our uh, health data. So as you uh, tour around uh, the country, you can still see that uh, many people are using uh, the conventional way of uh, keeping the health reports. Um, so the big question is why people are not moving into uh, the uh, digital health uh, arena. I think there are many uh, reasons behind. Uh, one is of course, I think the cost, any new technology you need to invest. And the two is the familiarity uh, with the uh, system. Um, of course, I think uh, the more senior uh, uh, health healthcare providers they are more likely uh, to feel comfortable with whatever uh, uh, system they have like, used until uh, these days. The younger uh, individual uh, obviously uh, will be more keen to move into the uh, the new technologies. Uh, there are many benefits as we have discussed uh, this morning. Um, so in order to uh, bridge uh, the gaps as well as overcome some of these uh, shortcomings, I think the country will need to have uh, uh, the, uh, the plan, just like what we have with uh, the five-year uh, Malaysia plan. And then si similarly, we need to have, uh, have the plan how to digital, uh, digitalize uh, healthcare in this country. So usually this, uh, have, this initiative have to be taken uh, by the uh, government, I, I believe, because they have more resources. Uh, they can actually provide incentive for people to upgrade. They can pro provide uh, the required uh, technical support as well as uh, other uh, aids, for instance, like for private hospital or private clinic, uh, some incentive in uh, the taxation and all those things. Uh, that is actually to encourage people to move into the uh, the new, uh, uh, so-called the new era. Um, and of course, once we actually get the ball rolling, uh, we can actually see uh, what's, what, uh, what sort of shortcomings that we still need to uh, patch up and then we can actually uh, uh, try to amend them uh, accordingly. Uh, I believe that uh, it's really high time for us to move into uh, the di digital health uh, now because the technology itself is already quite mature. The cost of uh, embracing uh, many of these uh, uh, digital technologies are not uh, as high as before. I remember that uh, many years ago, I think in 1998, uh, during our previous uh, uh, Prime Minister, uh, Tun Dr. Mahathir, uh, we were actually um, the, one of the first in the world to, uh, to talk about the telemedicine at that particular time. That was, I think, more than 20 years ago. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, that concept, I think, is, uh, uh, is ahead of the, uh, the time. It's a bit too early because the technology was not mature and we encountered a lot of uh, issues. Uh, the cost was uh, quite high. So, but now I think the, the technology is already quite mature. It's only how are we going to do it? And uh, I, I think we have no choice now, but it's, it's to move forward because the whole world is actually moving uh, uh, towards that direction. So this is what I would like to see. Thank you very much. All right, great doctor. Uh, just one last thing. Since most of our audiences will be uh, of the younger age group and um, 
I think most of us will be future doctors. So perhaps, uh, do you have any last parting messages or advice that you'd like to give us? Well, I think for the younger generation, I don't think I need to convince them to move into the digital health, right? So, but uh, what I would like to say that you are the future for this country. So, uh, for younger generation especially, uh, they should uh, take the initiative to help the country transforming into the, 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 the new era. Um, I mean, the era is already here, it's just that um, we need to make it happen in this country. So, uh, I don't think I need to convince them, but I think I should encourage them uh, to take the lead. Okay, so I think uh, that's my message to them. All right, thank you so much, Doctor. That, that, that message was uh, very well received. Uh, so once again, I'd like to thank uh, Associate Prof. Dr. Pang Yong Kek for sharing his uh, insights into advancements of uh, information technology as well as the impact on healthcare. And hopefully, in the future, I think more of us will be able to use uh, the insights again today in order to uh, to provide a better. Uh, outcome for the patient themselves. So yeah, thank you so much Dr. for your time and for your input.